Hello, welcome, my name is Anisius and welcome to this video. Total War Warhammer 2, with its many factions and races, has some factions that are played a lot and some factions that are, aren't played at all, like Beastmen, being one of the factions that is least loved but people really want them to be changed, like Chaos. Chaos has a lot of speculations about it and people are looking forward to Warhammer 3 to get it updated as well. But one of the factions that is so unloved and so little talked about is Nakai's campaign, Nakai the Wanderer. Um, as interesting a character as he is, nobody really talks about it. Because if they want to play Lizardmen, there's many other factions they can play that are less of a drag to play. And the mechanics are better fleshed out. So today I'm going to try to show you how to have a good start with Nakai without the hassle of trying to figure out how and what. All right, first of all, we're going to take the Citadel of Lead. Don't forget to put the Mage in the army as well. So he also gets the levels. We will auto-resolve it, as most of the battles should be auto-resolvable, to speed things up a bit. And we will go for the red line instead of the bl blue one, because we would prefer to have some more damage for the Croc cigars that we will recruit later. Additionally, we want to go for Lightning Strike and focus towards Wind Blast with the Mage. And we continue towards Conquata. And do upgrade all the buildings and also recruit some more Soros Warriors to get us some more uh, bounce of power in auto resolve and go for the bottom line in the research tree. It will give you more replenishment rate and more horde growth. Again, auto resolve this and we will have beaten the Fennaheim links. Do go sit in the inside of Conquata for more replenishment. Because if you sit somewhere else, Rakarth might go to a spot where our next part of the plan will work. Do also destroy this building because we don't need it anymore. We need the money. And there you go. They go to war with you every time. They will run back. Generally, the hero will be checking you out what you're doing. Now comes the key part of the plan. You need to avoid the hero and avoid the army. And so you go to the side and go into ambush stance here. So this way, just to, just make sure that they can't see you. So if you have success, Rakarth will leave and go towards his other enemy, Marienberg. Leaving the Isle of Whites totally open for you. Just in case, do go into ambush stance toward when you're moving towards the Isle of Whites. But if it fails, no, no worries. It should be long out of range to come back. And again. As you see, Marienberg is his other enemy. So that's where he is. And we can peacefully take the Isle of Whites. The auto resolve is a close one, but it's in your favor as you are playing a horde. Don't worry about that. And now we can finish the first tier in the red line and all the settlements of Rakarth are taken. Do continue towards Lightning Strike and improve the ambush uh, chance because we're going to need it later on in, into the campaign as well. Now, disband all the units you don't need that aren't cross cigars to save money for later on. And start moving north, because we want to go to Norska, and just in case that there's a the possibility that Rakarth comes back north as well. You could disband another cross cigar, but I personally don't do it. And don't forget, whenever you can, upgrade your main building to reduce upkeep and also get other uh, the other upkeep building built before you build up the army. Because 
it's going to be easier to build it now where you don't have any upkeep from your units than later when you have to go in between. There you have it. They are defeated in between turn 8 and 9 by probably Marienburg. Now we're going to go move as quickly as possible towards the north. And we are going to check out, there is a possibility or to go for the Bjornlings, or if they have an army sitting in Trollfjord, you're going to make the choice or to go to Trollfjord, or you're going to go north. This all depends on the Bjornlings setting an army in Trollfjord, uh, yes or no. In this case, there's no army, so that's the easiest way to just land there. And... Then it's your choice, or you can recruit Croctogors right now and fight them this turn, or get more upkeep reduction and spend one or two turns more in encampment stands, saving up money. And you can always check if your ally is willing to give money. If he doesn't want to give you at least 2,300, and if you're not in an emergency, don't do it. Then you simply wait. Waiting a turn when you're not in war is not that scary. Do keep in mind, everybody will declare war on you. Don't be surprised by that. So now, we recruit some Crocstagars, go to the next turn, and we will be able to attack the Trollfjord. Again. Easy auto resolve, and we now start with the blue line as the red line will take a bit to be more useful for uh, Nakai. And I do prefer to have some more Winds of Magic and a special army spell um, that you have every time. Important to do when you are in your allies' borders, your replenishment is way higher. So, just move on up, go on encampment stands to replenish and get an army compar comparable towards your income. Get the skink from your special tree, as the skink chief does give you replenishment and also uh, in the future a staggerdon. And just simply, you can ignore the rolling skies because you will not get any flying enemies for a long time. You will be haunted by other armies. Don't bother with that. It's generally better to push forward than go back and forth and don't get any new settlements. So here you're going to see how crazy Ultra Resolve is with the Crocs. They've full stack of marauders no problem at all if you lose a unit don't worry about it it just means you will save more money over the end turn all good and in this case it's not going to be the best idea to get more crocs until you have upkeep reduced And just, even with such low amounts, you see this one is hard to fight. So, key thing to do here is to go in ambush stance next to the settlement. They will come for you, because they don't think you're there. And it's an easy battle. This tactic you can use very often in Nakai's campaign. And additionally, again, if you want to move forward, make sure to move in your own territory if possible. Because the replenishment... And camera stands doesn't take any movement. And here again, we can see, okay, this is going to be a hard battle. So instead, try to go for the ambush. It will give you a lot of bounce of power. And as we have leveled it up, to be better ambushers, it's going to be a definitive ambush. Again, the odds might be off. You might think, okay, I'm going to lose unit. Don't worry about it. This is all fine. 
if they come for you, don't worry, just run away, go back to your settlement. As long as you have your ally at your back, you're going to be just fine. Don't feel afraid to use a turn or two to replenish as well. In this way, you at least are still as fast as you can be. So now, with a little bit of replenishment, we are going to be able to take them out without too much of a problem. All right, now we're going to go south and try to take as many settlements as we can and we'll go start circling around all of Norska, taking whatever we can. Now that we have lightning strike, fighting against more armies is no problem at all. And in this case, the beastmen came popping up. Also, auto-resolvable, you get more money. Getting Pyrrhic victories is actually not too bad because there's a chance that you get a blooded uh, trait for Nakai, which gives him more hit points. And generally, in the beginning, until you have your replenishment all said and done, go for replenishment from armies instead of getting money. The money is not, not that important. You don't need the income. I still have the ally that you every so many turns. Just double check if he is willing to give you money. He will give you any extra money that you need. And you just continue to get more upkeep reduction and uh, replenishment improvement for your army. So I did want to show you also one battle in where we don't have the best um, chances as we are very damaged. But this will show you how we can easily still use the army. As you see, blobbing up also for the Crocsigars is a good way to go. So they don't get surrounded and they will be able to cover each other's flanks and do the most damage against losing the least amount of hit points. You will use the Skink uh, Priest to do a general amount of damage against the uh, uh, infantry while the, the Skink Chieftain will be there to distract the enemy where it's possible. Overall, it's going to be a bit of micromanaging trying to keep your Croxagors blobbed up and use the Kai's abilities to boost all the fighters in the area. The Croxagors are only um, taken out the moment they lose all their entities. So don't be too afraid to use your Crocsigurts until the end, because they are very strong in hand-to-hand -hand until the bitter end. And you do also around turn 30, between turn 10 and 30, you will get the Saurus Scar veteran, who will also be a very good fighter for you. And there you have it. A quick win. Wasn't too hard. It has a close victory, but in the circumstances. All right, so that is my way of playing Nakai. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll be back with you as soon as I can. And also, feel free to leave a like or dislike if you liked uh, or disliked this video. If you did dislike the video, feel also free to tell me how and what, and I'll be able to improve it over time. That's it for me for today. I'll hope to see you around and thank you for watching my video. Bye bye.